Okay, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to make an electrical plan for our Habitat for Humanity house using Autodesk Revit. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here to our first floor and we're going to duplicate that view with no detailing. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it right away. That just says first floor. Oh, let me try that again. First floor. And let's call it, all caps, electrical plan. And what we're going to do is we have all our components in here. We want them to be able to be seen, but we don't want them to, to kind of overtake our view and take anything away from our electrical symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything using my box going right to left selects everything it touches. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to get everything in my plan. And when I right click and I go to override graphics in view by element, what I could do is change it to half tone, hit apply, and then OK. And what this does is you see it kind of fades it out. So you could still see that it's there, but it's going to be uh, grayed out so that we could kind of show our symbols and um, the different things so that it doesn't overtake it. So next thing I'm going to do is you're going to download your symbols that you have. And in the Google Classroom, let's go to this and we just download all of these all right so what I've done is I've downloaded all of them and let's go to the insert I'm sorry the annotate tab and we're gonna go ahead and um, in the annotate tab we're gonna go to the component and we're going to load those items that I just loaded. And these are going to be our symbols for our electrical plan. So let's get our detail component, load family. And if you downloaded them off the uh, website, they should be in your downloads tab by your name. And I'm going to just load all of them all at once. OK, so now we're ready to put our things like our switches, our outlets, and our lights in. So what you have to do though is you have to look at this sheet that you have. This is going to go over the building codes and where your outlets are going to need to go and where your switches are going to need to go and where other things are going to need to go. We're going to have to use our GFCI switches where uh, other things are going to need to go. So make sure that you read through this document and you understand because remember you're being graded uh, per this rubric by if things are in the correct location okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting in some of my lights and the nice thing about these lights are um, so if I wanted to put you know a couple lights for my front door I could put them if I wanted to put a light in my bedroom I can but in my bedroom what I want to do is I want to change it to a fan so instead of putting this one in what we could do is select the fan detail and we could put that and so bedrooms I would put some ceiling fans in the bathroom obviously I want a fart fan or an exhaust fan but I don't want to have this big giant ceiling fan so if I select it in my properties over here I could change it from ceiling fan to bathroom fan and that's going to change it like that all right and I could go through maybe in my living room when I put in my lights. I don't want to just have, uh, you know, these generic lights. I want to have, and you could mess around with the spacing on yours. I'm going to just use my lines. And if I select all these at once, let's try that again, I could change them to recess can lights. All right. So I get recess can lights in there. I know in my dining room I would probably want to have some sort of fancy light, maybe in my kitchen as well. All right, I don't know what you'd want in here. I'd probably put some recessed can lights in my uh, utility room. All right, so you can go ahead, and I'm not going to get crazy and do them all, but obviously my closets would need lights, my back door would need lights. The next thing I'm going to look at is outlets. All right, so when you do outlets, Remember, we're going to put outlets, and you need to look at the building codes for this because there need to be uh, a, a certain distance from the edge of the walls, and it, the length you need to have a certain amount. I'll let you do the research on that. But I could start putting my outlets in. I know basically every wall needs some sort of outlet, and 
you know, the bigger the wall gets, the more outlets it needs. But let's put, you know, it's a nice for Christmas lights and stuff to have a wall outside. All right, and then when we get to our kitchen, they're going to need to be so many feet apart from one another. I'm not going to spoil the fun for you. You can look that up on your own. And when I put in all of these kitchen outlets, remember, they're near water, within four feet of water. Uh, and generally, all kitchen outlets need to be that GFCI protected. So when I select it, see, I could just do the GFCI label on there. All right, so I would go through and select all of them that are to need to be GFCI. The other thing is right here, this outlet outside needs to be a weatherproof outlet, right? And so we could do the waterproof one. And that's uh, for that one. Uh, so any of those outlets that you put in need to have the correct annotation for your electricians to know that uh, what goes where. All right, so the last thing I would need to do, and of course I'm missing lots of outlets that so you could have the fun and put them all in, is to put our switches in for uh, these symbols that I loaded in. So let's go and let's get our switch. All right, spacebar gets it there. So I need to have a light here. And I know that I would need to have another light switch right here. All right, once again, you need to look at the building code sheet to understand where these switches go and how close they need to be to the door. All right, so, you know, I would have switches to go to my closet lights. All right, once again, I'm not going to put them all in. Uh, you could do that on your own. So here I know that this switch and this switch would operate these lights together. So if I take this one, it'd be a three-way switch. All right. And you can see it's kind of upside down. So let's change it to the three-way mirror. Ah, better. And take this one, three-way, apply. All right. That's good enough for what we need to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually need to create a line style for these lights to show our dash lines going from here. So what we're going to do is come to the Manage tab and we're going to go to our additional settings. This is something we've never done before. We're going to do our line styles. And what we're going to do is create a new line style. Very exciting. And let's call it electrical. Oh, it's a, such a big word. Electrical line. Okay. And then it's going to be black. Let's change the line white to four, kind of in the middle. And then let's do our line pattern. Let's do a dash line. All right. And let's do a 16th. Okay. So now when I do this, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the annotate tab, detail line. And now we could select that electrical line style that we made. And what we're going to use is the arc tool. Uh, I like the start and radius one. So I just go here to there. And you want to kind of give it a curve so it's not to be confused with another, uh, you know, line in your house. And then here to here. And we're just going to go around and put in all our lines that are connected to our switches to show which switch controls which line. Uh, that one, I really nailed it, so let's try that again. Sometimes Revit is a finicky beast. And then we would end finally on our last one, going back to that three-way switch. And just kind of make it look pretty. Alright, so we know that these switches would control all these lights. Same thing in here our switch going from um, our fan to our s switch. Just, you know, have it going here. If you want to get crazy, you could have a switch for the light and you could have a switch for the fan would be the nice thing. Remember all your closets lights, your fans in your bathroom and the lights there all need to have a switch. Don't forget these front door lights need to be controlled by something. So all your switches uh, need to go to a light and every light needs to have a switch. Okay, the last thing we're going to do uh, for our plan is we're going to go in and we're going to create uh, a fuse panel uh, for the plan. All right, so to do our electrical panel, what we're going to use is we're going to use in the annotate tab the region tool, and we're going to use a filled region. Now, remember, your fuse panel needs to go. It usually goes on an exterior wall because remember we have the power coming in from outside. It's nice to have the fuse panel right on the other side of this meter. Uh, and... 
I'm going to put mine in my utility room, and you can see I have a nice space right here in between the water heater and the washer and dryer. So uh, I'm going to use the rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a box and, you know, a nice uh, 18 by maybe 4 box. All right, and when we hit our green check, you can see it. It, it kind of fills it in with this pattern so that you can see it. And... I'm sure there's some official fill pattern that you have to use, uh, whatever, but we're going to just keep it the way that we have it. The last thing I'm going to want to do is we're going to go and we're going to create a legend on the side with all the different components I have in. So what I like to do is just take this, copy it, and paste it you know, over to the side. All right, I could go and get every single item I have. And we could put them over. You could line them up nice and pretty. And then what we could just do is, uh, in the annotate tab, we use the text command. And we can make, let's see how big this is. Oh, geez. Let's try that again. We put in our text box. And I would just say, fuse panel. And you can see our, our, our uh, font is very big, so let's edit this type. Let's duplicate it. And I think a quarter is way too big, so let's try a sixteenth. Okay, so let's just change the text size to a sixteenth. Okay, and it didn't do anything, but now we just take this and we switch it to the sixteenth. And that looks good. And so you would go... You'd go and you label each one of the items that you put in here. Remember, every single item you see in your electrical plan needs to be represented in the legend over on this side. Okay, so I'm not going to go and do them all, but I would just take, copy and paste them all over to this side. So then once you have all your legends done, all your electrical stuff is done uh, according to the billing codes and it looks nice and pretty, we're going to go over here to our sheets. We're going to create a new sheet. Let's load in that B size. Uh -huh. You're going to load in that B size sheet of paper and remember we're going to take and we're going to crop our view so let's put it in and we got to scale it according to the best fit. Let's try 3 8 and it's probably going to be too big. All right, so a quarter, which is that looks like it's going to be good. So let's delete it. Let's put it back in. Oh, I'm sorry. We got to go back then to the view and let's crop the region. And be careful when you crop it that you don't get uh, that legend out of the All right, let's keep everything in there. Let's turn off our crop region. Let's go back to our title block. Oh, and let's try and drag and drop again. And it will fit, but what I'm gonna have to do is go back and recrop it so that we get everything in here and I got a little uh, greedy with it so let's try again oh yeah does it fit just barely so I could play around with that to get this up there you can see I got everything in here and remember when I go to print we're going to go and change it to the RICO. All right, I don't have it on here. And then you got to go in and change the properties, the paper to 11 by 17. Okay, and then the other thing you're going to do is go to uh, and select the electrical plan sheet to print out just like we've done in the past.